Hello, I'm your superhero critic, and I'll stay super as long as you stay awesome. It's January 2020! That being said, it's time for another theme month. So, let's just dive into the weirdest medium regarding the comic book genre. Musicals. I say musicals because Hollywood and Broadway tend to like taking comic strips and comic books and spinning them into musicals, whether it be film or not. From Batman and Superman to Charlie Brown all the way to Robin Williams' infamous Popeye film, nothing seems to be out of reach for this type of medium. But what about musicals about superheroes themselves? That brings us to Dr. Horrible's Sing Along Blog. Dr. Horrible was a 2008 musical that was filmed in L.A. That tells the story of an aspiring supervillain and his superhero nemesis fighting over the love of a charity worker named Penny. The story was written and produced by Joss Whedon and his brothers and was written in order to create something small and inexpensive during the 2007-2008 Writers Guild Strike. The musical itself was very successful and was one of the most innovative films of that year. So without further ado, let's dig into something that's not as horrible as it sounds and begin the month of January with Dr. Horrible. We begin with Dr. Horrible, played by Neil Patrick Harris, practicing his evil laugh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I give your laugh a two. It needs a lot of work. Our main character continues his live stream answering questions and rambling about him needing to take over the world. While reading an email, he is questioned on who the herd that tends to be mentioned actually is. And the first song of the series, Freeze Ray, begins. Okay, so normally would be the time where the reviewer would talk about each song and show you how the songs play and stuff like that. But because of copyright, I'm just going to do a rating system of out of five for each song. And if you haven't heard the soundtrack, go ahead and listen to it for yourself. That being said, let's continue. Freeze Ray is a song about Dr. Horrible confessing his love for the female of the movie Penny, played by Felicia Day. Horrible himself proclaims that by using his new weapon, he can show Penny the world. This song is actually my second favorite song, so all in all, I have to give it a rating of 4 out of 5, because it's the easiest song to get stuck in your head. We then meet Horrible's play... We then meet Horrible's roommate, played by Simon Helberg from Big Bang Theory. Conflict Diamond told me you were doubling with Bait and Switch. Yeah. Yeah? It was alright. I kind of thought I was supposed to end up with Bait, but I hear you. Get it? They Bait and Switched? The Bait and Switch? Meaning they thought Moist was gay? <laughs> Moist. Horrible then gets a letter from the head of the Evil League of Evil giving him a message. Bad horse, bad horse, bad horse, bad horse. He rides across the nation, the thoroughbred of sin. He got the application that you just sent in. It needs evaluation, so let the games begin. A heinous crime, a show of force, a murder would be nice, of course. Bad horse, bad horse, bad horse. At least that letter doesn't scream at him like Ron Weasley's does. Horrible is excited because he has a heist tomorrow, and we then jump to the next day with Penny's song, which is really not that long to deserve a rating, but it's about asking people to help with her charity drive. All while Horrible is trying to hijack a van, but is interrupted by Penny herself, who just wants signatures for stopping the building from being burned down. From the head, as they say, so my thinking is why not cut off the head? of the human race. It's not a perfect metaphor, but I'm talking about an overhaul of the system, putting the power in different hands. That was as smooth as a baby's butt. The next song is called A Man's Gotta Do, and at first is about Horrible trying to do his heist, but is interrupted by Nathan Fillion's Captain Hammer, who destroys Horrible's device, and the song becomes more about Hammer being a hero. 
However, that ends up making the van go wild, almost hitting Penny with Hammer saving her at the last moment. I understand that you have super strength and you just shoved me so I didn't get hit by a truck, but did you have to throw me in fucking trash? Penny interrupts the two squabbling by thanking Hammer for saving her life. The song then continues with Hammer praising himself, Penny loving on Hammer, and Horrible being ignored. I personally give this song a 3 out of 5 as it's not the best song of the series, but it's not the worst, being in the middle for me, but it does its best to introduce Captain Hammer, thus ending Act 1. And now with Act 2, you're going to start seeing how selfish Dr. Hammer really is and how relatable Dr. Horrible is as a person who just wants to be noticed and accepted by the person he loves. Act 2 begins right away with the song My Eyes, where Horrible sings about how much he hates the fact Penny has fallen for Captain Hammer, and he, he is shown constantly stalking the couple, all while Penny is singing about trying to see the good in everyone, and helping out others should be a focus in life. Personally, I would have to give this song a 5 out of 5 because it gives us one huge message. That message being that if you can push forward, even though you have nothing but negative in your life at this point in time, you can eventually overcome everything. Powerful message indeed. We go to the next day at the laundromat where Dr. Horrible and Penny discuss hers and Hammer's date over yogurt. Horrible does not like her response. Billy? Yeah? You're driving the spork into your leg. So I am. Hilarious. You have officially sporked yourself. Horrible does another live stream telling the world his gun is working and he plans to strike, but it quickly jumps to the next day where we learn that Hammer has stopped him again. He then gets a call from the League telling him that the only way in now is to kill someone. He saw the operation you tried to pull today, but your humiliation means he still votes nay, and now assassination is just the only way. There will be blood, it might be yours, so go kill someone, sign that horse. GET OUT OF MY HOUSE! Horrible contemplates who he should kill, and at the laundromat, Penny does her best to cheer up Billy as we go into another of Penny's songs called Penny Song, which is Penny trying to show horrible things are not as bad as they seem. And while personally I don't like this song, it still deserves a 3 out of 5 for Felicia's voice and her talent. Hammer then shows up and tells Penny he's got the mayor to sign the shelter to him. He then taunts Horrible about the things he's going to do with Penny with his hammer. By hammer, he means penis. The hammer is my penis. I just said that, thank you, sir. Act 2 ends with my favorite song of the series called Brand New Day, which is about Horrible being determined on changing his own life and making Captain Hammer his choice of who he will murder, as well as showing Penny his newest reason on being a better villain. And of course, I'll give it a 5 out of 5. Why a 5 out of 5? Because it's my show. I make the rating system and... <laughs> Act 3 begins with the city discussing Hammer and Penny dating, as well as Hammer helping the poor and the homeless of the city. But we see ha that maybe Penny actually may have feelings for Billy, while he is shown working on changing his freeze ray into a death ray. And I give the first song of Act 3... Three out of five creepy stalker fans. We go to a charity show where Captain Hammer bullshits his way through a speech that turns into a song that I'm personally rating a one out of five because while the message of being their own type of hero is good, the song boosts Captain Hammer's already toxic douchiness. Thank you for shutting up that douchebag. Dr. Horrible then dives into a song about how gullible people are to Hammer's false actions, finally showing a side that he didn't even know he had, telling the room to remember who he is as he'll be the one to take Hammer down, only for Hammer to unfreeze. That's not a good sound. 
That song gets a 3 out of 5 because the tone, the atmosphere, and the lyrics are just so great. As for that punch, I give it a 5 out of 5 because he got knocked off. Hammer mocks horrible, but the death ray explodes, hitting him backwards and making him cry like a little baby when it explodes. But it also sends pieces of the ray shooting into Penny, causing her to die in Horrible's arms. On the bright side, at least our protagonist wins? Yes. We then get the final song about the resolution of life. The song itself shows that even though Horrible gets everything he wanted, he gets it at the cost of the ultimate price, ending everything with Horrible joining the loop. So I'm going to give the final song a 3 out of 5 because of the message, be careful what you wish for, is a very strong one. That being said, if you haven't seen Joss Whedon's Dr. Horrible film, I highly suggest it. It's one of my favorite musicals. And at least it's better than, I don't know, Age of Ultron and Justice League, to name a few of Whedon's works. That being said, join me next time as we take a look at the comic book adaptation of a movie of an adaptation of a comic strip. Wow, that hurts my brain.